Well, last time we made armatures, basic armatures with some found wire and all that sort of thing, but it did give us the ability to get those small, fun little lockdown bobbies more um, dynamic. And this time I want to show you, take you one stage further ahead, um, getting away from the normal sort of gardening wire to um, a far better wire, a square sectioned aluminium wire which is designed for armatures, designed for sculpting. Um, and you can get it through Southwest Industrial Plasters, which is all on that website. And so um, this is what it is. This is the wire I'm looking at. It is square sectioned aluminium wire, three millimeter um, depth. And it actually comes in three millimeter, five millimeter, seven millimeter, and 10 millimeters. Um, forget these ones, these are far too big and tough and strong. They are really good for bigger sculptures and, <clears throat> and for supporting the, the armatures on bigger pieces. I'll show you that later. This is the wire that I really suggest you get, the three millimeter. Um, but you could also, if you wished, order a wee bit of the 5mm. Now, what's the advantage of square sectioned aluminium wire? Um, it is, it gives you real strength um, and, and that it helps with the sketch. It bends easily. Um, if you get your pliers, um, you can give it a good sharp bend and it is perfect. It holds its shape and yet it's good and firm. So this I really, really recommend. I use the whole time. Now, to get the armature right, I go to the extent of finding on the website, whatever it may be, a skeleton of the animal that I'm trying to do, in this case, a canteria. Um, what I have done here is draw on a line, a green line here, which denotes the real, the main bones of the dog from the front foot here up its leg, through its shoulder blade, along its back, and down to its hind foot here. Um, I've then, as you can see, numbered them, numbered each of the bones, um, in this case, one to 12. I've then, on the other side, charted them um, with the serial numbers here and the dimensions there. But let's make this more simple. What I have done, and I put it on the website so you can see it, is make this diagram. Now, don't get overly distracted by these long bits here. I'll explain why I've done that. Um, but essentially, the armature is going up like that, down like that to the hind foot. And you can have two of these um, because it's got four legs. Four legs, yes, four legs. Um, and then you can have one which goes from the nose to the tail. And I have charged it on the back there, but that's on the website, so you can see it. Now, this column here is over to you. If you want to make it slightly bigger, you say twice the size, then you multiply all these numbers by two. Or if you make it smaller, you multiply it by 0.5, maybe. Think about it, it all works. So, okay, square sectioned aluminium wire. The great thing about it is the reason you go for square section, they t um, Southwest do do a round section, it's very good, but I prefer the square section because if you get it flat and straight, when you come to tape it together, you've got a flat side against a flat side and it becomes really strong, but we'll see that in a second. So how do I go about it? First of all, I will draw on these measurements onto the wire um, in this form. So the front foot is there and I've got little sections go for each of the measurements going along. That's to its shoulder blade, along its back and then down, down its hind leg to there. So that is what I've got. Lines on my wire. Then what I can do, where are my pliers? Yes, pliers are useful. If you've got pliers, use them. If you can get hold of them, use them. Otherwise, you can use your fingers, but this makes it sharper, and I'll explain how. Um, so what I'm going to do is bend this wire to form that shape. Now, these extended bits here 
are purely if you want to make a support for the armature other than putting them into a block of wood. The block of wood is a better route. So I'm going to leave these here for the time being. Let me show you how to bend this bit of wire using my pliers. Okay, this is the, that is the extended bit here. I'm actually going to cut it off because I'm going to put this one into a block of wood. So let's just snip him off there and we'll snip him off here. So I've got that bit of wire like that. Happy? Very good. Now, um, what I then do is put my pliers up to the wire where I want to bend it. I bend it good and hard. So in this case, let me show you the, the, the diagram here. That is his foot. That's the first one. Um, I bent it really hard like that. Um, it's then going up the leg and it'll bend forward. But if I put the, the, the pliers against the line and then bend it hard, I get good sharp shapes. And that's what I'm after. Good sharp shapes. Do you see how it's going? Yo! And again, along its backbone, then down to its hips, down its hind leg, so that I get that. And that is one side of my Cairn Terrier, my lockdown Bobby. And this is the other side, because the extraordinary thing is, um, dogs have four legs. And so now all I need to do is to tape these together. I'm using good old brown parcel tape. You could use sellotape, absolutely fine. Um, but this is the way I found it. The square section, flat side against flat side. Put the tape on, whoa, put the tape, yes, put the tape on like that. Good and firm. Then stretch it hard around so that it really, really stretches around and is good and firm. So you've got that, that, look, two dimensions. How do I make it four dimensions? Very easy. I just spread his legs like that. Pliers make it a little easier. Um, spread his shoulder blades out like that. Pliers again, make it a little easier. And suddenly, look, it is a four dimensional um, dog but it hasn't got its nose to its tail. So, guess what? I've made a nose to tail. This you'll find on this section, number 15 through to 19. Um, 15 through to 19. So we're going to make this shape. How do I do it? I get my pliers against the line, bend it good and hard, squeeze it around, and squeeze that up, and guess what? There I've got my nose to tail. Um, then I find my wire, my, my tape. As I say, you do not need too much tape. Too much tape actually makes it weaker. Um, it's better to have a little bit of tape on. And then stretch it around, really stretch. Stretch it, stretch it, stretch it around. So look, you can see a Cairn Terrier armature. What have I said an armature is? It is strength and sketch. This is the sketch of a Cairn Terrier. It doesn't quite have the strength yet but to hold itself up. Um, so what we need to do now is is to support it. But before we support it, there's something very important you've got to do. You've got to think how your animal, your sculpture is going to be moving. Now, it could be that we have a standing Cairn Terrier. Maybe he's turning his head a wee bit to one side. Remember, it could be a Labrador or a Lurcher. Um, um, or maybe it's wagging its tail somehow. Um, maybe, in the case of this one, it's sitting down. It's exactly the same armature, just bent so that it's sitting down. So you've now got to work out what your animal is doing. Then you can support it.
So in this case, what I've, I've decided to do, setting down Care and Terrier, um, I'm supporting it with a bit of wire that goes into the a wooden base here. This happens to be five millimeter wire. You could use um, your um, three millimeter tape together. Um, and then you just make a T piece like that um, and tape it onto its tummy comes up. And then this would get drilled into a bit of wood. And that would be perfectly good for a standing dog. You could double the strength by putting a second bit of wire going down its tummy that way. All very good stuff. But it may be that you want to give your, your dog some movement. So in this case, let's see how we make this can terrier move. We bend him, but we bend him where his bones will naturally bend. Um, so let's make him, let's make him run, um, tail in the air, and I think at this point we will bend his legs around like this, um, yep, probably somehow like that, and up like that, and if you can see, yes, we've got a wee dog running, um, in which case we get our support. Um, let's just bend this a little bit further so we would tape it on like that and into some wood um, and you might put a second bit coming out here and down into the wood now enough of that with this size i am going to my aim for my lockdown bobby is going to be to make one slightly bigger one and i've made up the armature here already this is going to be my lockdown bobby he's going to be a cairn terrier um, or maybe she, because it's scrumpy, um, and, but she is bounding. She's really going for it. I'm supporting her in the middle. Do you see I've come down from its neck, down to the ground? I've got a little dog leg here to make it easier to fix it into the wood. Um, and she is going to be just escaping from lockdown, which is something I think we all want to do when it is safe to do so. So this is going to make my dynamic, exciting, happy Lockdown Bobby. Armature complete. Now it's time to model. Plasticine. Warmed if necessary, um, very slightly with a blow heater or a hairdryer or something, just very slightly warmed. And then I'm going to build up, you'll see, build up its body, build up along its legs, keeping the strength and sketch in the armature. So you will see the muscle structures beginning to grow. And then I'll build up towards its very hairy exterior. 